All right, here is our inaugural guest on this podcast, Iron Mike Larson. I'm going to start off this segment by talking about a little story about Coach Larson. Um, actually, my first basketball game on campus uh, was against Montana Tech in uh, the the spring of 2019. Um, we we got a big win. I think it was probably by three or four points, and things got a little heated in the uh, handshake line with the coach from Montana Tech, and things kind of settled their way out. But from then on, uh, our football student section kind of started uh, chanting Iron Mike when we uh, started winning games and things of that nature. As actually night, we painted our chest with dogs. It's really sad. I'm actually the only guy left that painted our chest for one of his first games here. So it's really interesting to get to talk to you, Coach. And I'm super excited to talk about this weekend's conference tournament, get to know a little more about you, let Bulldog fans that might not know much about you get to know you and what you're about. So first, what's your background? Where'd you come from? Where'd you play high school ball? Uh, grew up in Utah, um, played basketball in Utah, was, was fortunate enough to be good enough at basketball to, to get out of Utah and go to uh, play at Northwest Missouri State. Um, really, really good program in Missouri. And then it's just kind of wherever the ball took me from there. Went from Missouri to South Dakota to Iowa, uh, back to South Dakota, uh, and now here in Montana as a head coach. So uh, been pretty fortunate to play and coach as long as I have now and you know, just keep trying to build this program and, and make it as good as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And you said Dakota State was your last stop before here, correct? Yep, in, the, in the North Star, right? Yeah. Yep, in the North, the North Star. Star. Yeah. Four right. conference championships over a six year span. And, you know, we were, we were really good when we were there. And, um, you know, had a lot of fun when, when, when I was an assistant coach and the interim head coach and uh, was able to do a lot of cool things. Awesome. So, what kind of, I would like to know what brought you here. What, what made you want to, start your head coaching career off here what made you want to apply well i mean when you when you follow basketball like i follow um you know you're always looking around and seeing what what conferences are really really good um you know when you look from the north star to the frontier uh the one thing that stood out is the north star the frontier is getting three sometimes four teams into the national tournament every single season so uh obviously when i was applying that was one of the things that I wanted to say as a, as a young head coach is like, Hey, I get to go play in a conference that is dominant, uh, which is also really hard becoming a new head coach in a dominant conference, especially in, I think my first two years, uh, LC state and Carroll college both played in the national championship yeah. game. Yeah. Um, th so, you know, you come into a conference like that, you, you really get tested early on. Um, for me, that was the biggest thing I wanted to be tested. I wanted to prove to myself and, uh, to everyone around that, you know, I was a guy that understood the game of basketball, uh, had a great knowledge of the game and just wanted to keep getting better and no better opportunity than uh, to come to Dillon, Montana and in a great school like Montana Western. Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you get Coach Jensen to come with you? Where did that relationship start? Coach Pat Jensen, our assistant men's basketball coach, how'd that start? Um, he was one of the first ones to apply uh, for the assistant job when I got it uh, or when I once I opened it up. Um, and it just kind of, I guess, just kind of blossomed. I called him one day and said, hey, I'm going recruiting to Utah. I'd love to stop and talk to you. You know, would you like to sit down and talk? And we ended up talking for a couple hours just about the game and life and, and my philosophy and, and, you know, all of the things that we kind of met, uh, meshed really well. And then he came up here uh, to visit Western and kind of talk about some more stuff. And, um, you know, been very, very fortunate and blessed to have him on my staff for the last five years. And, uh, you know, as long as I keep, you know, paying him and making sure he gets his paycheck, hopefully he'll keep coming back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone loves that guy. Um, why basketball? Why do you, why do you, who made you want to get into basketball growing up? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, it's going to sound bad and good at the same time. I, I'm really not good at anything else. Um, I didn't enjoy much of anything else. Like I played football in high school. Um, I was a quarterback and a free safety and, and, and it was fun when I played, but the passion that I've always had for basketball to learn and just keep learning. And like, I, I have a really good memory. So I memorize set plays and I just love the, everything that the basketball is. So uh, that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, and then my dad, uh, 
my dad was always big. Just, I mean, I traveled from what, fifth grade on till ninth grade. We were playing 170 something games a year in basketball. We were traveling every week, playing two games on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so it was always a part of what I did. Um, so obviously once I got the opportunity to get into um, play college and then it was kind of luckily that I got an opportunity to coach in college right out of the, uh, the shoot. So it's always been part of what I do uh, and I love it. And as long as I don't get fired, I want to keep doing it forever. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think that's a lot of people's answers when they come to sports, especially when you start out kind of, you're starting out at a smaller school. You really got to graduate to the top. I think that that makes a lot of good sense. And so we're going to do our first segment here. It's called leveling with the dogs. We're going to have three levels of players. I want to hear the top three basketball players from the NBA in your mind. And it can be from your generation. It could be from now. It can be what you think all time. If you think that debate's fair, what's your top three? I mean, Michael Jordan's one and it's not really a debate. So we won't even debate that one. We'll just put him at number one. Uh, I, I would say LeBron is two, um, just based on, I mean, the dude's six, nine, two seventy. He's, I mean, the best athletes probably ever played the game of basketball. Uh, and then statistically in every pass, you know, assists, points, you know, rebounds, you name it. He, he's, he's leads in every category just about. Um, and then my third, which is probably the, the one that's, I'm just going to go with my guy just because I think, you know, I think John Stockton is one of the most underrated point guards that's ever played. Uh, the fact that he, that no one will ever touch his assist record. It's not even close. Like it will yeah. never be even remotely broken. Um, that says a lot about, you know, a guy that's, what is he six foot tall, maybe, and, you know, can, can handle and do what he did uh, on the floor and lead Utah to conference finals over and over again. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm going to give mine. This is our little segment. I'm going to give my top three basketball players. I'm not a basketball player. I play football here at Montana Western, but I'm going to give my top three. I'm going to agree with the top one. Uh, Michael Jordan's got to be one. My dad grew up a huge Michael Jordan fan. I actually, for the next podcast, I'm going to wear my Michael Jordan. I got a Michael Jordan Olympic jersey. I'm going to wear that for the next podcast if I can find it. And But for two, I'm going to go with, with Kobe. I think just, and this doesn't have to be off basketball skill. I don't know a lot about basketball skill, but Kobe's impact on the game in a lot of ways and a lot of kids for motivational factors is unreal. I think a lot of us younger people, I was born in 1999. I'm 23 years old. Like getting, when he passed, I think a lot of us did now everything we could. Now I am feeling older. <sighs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it here. Don't worry about it. You know, I think that when, when he passed away, a lot of us kids that didn't grow up around basketball, you know, I played a little bit of basketball, but it wasn't my life and getting to read about some of the things he said and the way he responded to adversity and things. That's what makes him number two in my eyes. Uh, he had this quote I saw the other day about how um, missing games. He talked about how he wanted to play, be there for the family that saved up for a year to watch him play. And I think that's something that's really cool. And then number three for me would obviously be LeBron James. I mean, just absolutely unreal as a basketball player, getting to watch him grow up. That's kind of my entire era. You know, you see him in the, the bubblegum commercials when we were four and five years old and he's still playing now that we're about to have our own kids soon is just unreal. Still being at the top of the game. All right, so that is leveling with the dogs. And now we're going to get on to a, another question about just life here in Dylan. Dylan's best meal, in your opinion. There's not much to choose from, so I got I got to hear the best one. Oh, it's it's no brainer. It's uh, Sparky's Buffalo Mac and Cheese. Oh, man, there's, I could not agree there, more. There's, there's, no, there's no competition right there. I would absolutely agree with that. And I, I do, And I do love pop teas taco pizza and i yeah. love, i mean there's some big there's some big time meals <clears throat> but if you told me that i had to go get one thing right now which it's getting close to lunchtime this might actually be fruition i might be going to get that for lunch now uh but that sounds really really good absolutely i couldn't agree more mine would have to be up there with that as well i usually do the pulled pork mac and cheese but that's a great one i'm gonna have to note that one down and all right so now we're kind of getting here to the end of our first interview on this show and lastly we've got a conference tournament coming up this weekend they changed the format this year we're doing a neutral site we're not getting playoff games which is a little interesting to me we don't you know get the home field advantage like we've gotten last year you know last year we're one 
one game away from making the conference championship, you know, and that that hurts us as fans as well. Not as much as it hurts you guys, obviously, but that home, if we could have got one of those games at home, you never know what's going to happen. And Oh, I know what's going to happen if we're playing at home. The dog, <laughs> and the dog pound's coming out. The, uh, the dogs are really going to be barking oh, when yeah. the dogs are at home. And so what is your biggest goal for this conference tournament this weekend, knowing that you're going to Great Falls at the Four Seasons Arena, neutral environment, there's not going to be – as normal as many fans as are here in the Strauss. So what do you think your biggest goal is for the conference tournament? Well, I, I mean, it's, it's playoff time. You know, it's, it's one, it's one day at a time, uh, one game at a time, but you know, playing in a neutral site, it, it, I think it does benefit us in a little bit because well, one, we play a lot of non-conference games on the road, neutral mm-hmm. sites to begin the year. So I feel like we've got a really good uh, feeling on what that is like. Um, and for us, it's just, you know, we've played really, really good basketball this year. You know, we, we, we got an opportunity to play Northern, um, who's a really good team, but we've proven we can beat them. We've beaten them twice this year. So just one day at a time, you know, get us a chance to, to see if we can go 1-0 and on Sunday night uh, and then have an opportunity to play against Tech, which uh, I would love uh, nothing more to have one more chance at them. Um, Absolutely. Just after last year, getting beat by, you know, one at, at their place. So mm-hmm. it'll be fun for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. So what time's that game Sunday night? 7 o'clock Sunday night, and then I think we go 7 o'clock again so Monday, Monday, Monday night, night if we get a win. If we get a win. And then uh, it'll be on the YouTube channel, I believe. And so to anybody who watches this, make sure you hop on the YouTube channel at 7 o'clock on Sunday night to watch the Bulldogs play. One last question for you is, is where do you see where do you see our biggest need for this weekend? What's the one thing you think, if you had to think of, that we need to do this weekend to get four wins? I think we're we've won we won seven league games this year, and all seven league games we won we held the opponent under sixty five points. So uh, defensive, if we can bring our defensive energy, and be locked in defensively, uh, that'll fuel our offense. I think we'll have a really good weekend. Absolutely, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. So absolutely, thanks for being the number one guest to ever come on the pilot episode of Barking with the Dogs. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it.